Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord our heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for According to your loving kindness. And your great compassion, Lord, I am Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever forward. 
Against you only have I sinned. And is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And you make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body of the world may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. And renew the right spirit within me. A reading from 1 Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he has judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me when the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. But well, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Years ago, I was in an uh, arts and sciences faculty meeting, and a professor of the school where I was working at the time, who was from Nigeria, was kind of chortling over a, a, a plan being put forward by the chair of the the art department, he says, well, you know, in my country, we don't so much tend to see art as something just isolated off in its own corner. Like you wouldn't have an art museum where all the art would go that kind of segregates it out from the rest of the world that wouldn't have been seen as art. Like art goes in this fancy building and not, not anywhere else. It's everywhere that art is everywhere, that art is to be found in every step, in every breath, in every moment. That's where the art is. And in a sense, it was funny because I remember him in a different conversation talking about love and saying that in my um, home language in, uh, in, in Nigeria, we don't really have a word for love the way you do here, such that you would come up to someone and say, I love you, well, as if that's something distinguishable from the rest of your life and the rest of your relationship. In other words, it loves everywhere. It's always, all the time, and you're living into that love and you're living 
out of it. So it's not going to be in this neat little channel or this neat little package. And, and that's love all wrapped up with a nice bow when it's really everywhere. He said, really, the closest thing we have for that is, is a verb that sort of says, I've got my eye on you. So it's sort of like, I'm, I'm watchful of you. I'm mindful of you. When will you leave? When will you come back? Where are you now? If I'm remotely you know, distant from you, I'm still thinking about you. So I kind of have my eye on you. So that's a particular kind of expression of this, this life, really, that's 24-7 and not just in this neat little bow or neat little package or neat little building where we'll put all the art, when really the art is everywhere and always to be found. And I think that connects very deeply with our Lord and the way he seems to teach most of all. I mean, yeah, we have the Sermon on the Mount and he, he sort of discourses there, uh, you know, blessed are the poor and I believe that. Blessed are the peacemakers. I believe that and on and on. But I have to say, as I look at the scriptural witness, I don't see Jesus so much giving lectures that kind of go on and on and here are the principles and here are the, the sub you know, principles and here are the sub sub principles and it's all systematically organized and you can look it up in an index. Instead, it's more preaching out of the moments of life. He preaches out of the situations where people live. He tells parables. He tells stories and the stories in themselves are just simple. They're accessible to anybody, but if you hear them out, they have incredible meaning and incredible depth. And they're incredibly powerful because they speak to the needs of the people who hear them. So he's talking to farmers and fishermen and, and people who live in simple circumstances, and that's the language that he uses to express the deepest thoughts about God. And so it is today. And he tells parables to talk about a very, very, very important you know, theological meaning, as we were talking about today in the adult class, being the mercy of God, that God treats us better than we deserve. God doesn't treat us with justice, like, boom, well, this is your penalty for this, and this is your penalty for that, and this is going to be meted out just this much, and you've done this much, and you get this much. That's not how God treats us. God treats us better than we deserve. God treats us with mercy. God treats us with love that surpasses what we can ever reasonably demand or ever reasonably expect. And the just everyday circumstances that he talks about, the stuff people face all the time, and that's how he connects it. He doesn't just connect it in terms of great principles out above the clouds, but in the lives of people. And what do they experience? And what do they come to know? So he gives simple, simple examples. You know, whatever, the, the shepherd. I mean, they get that, right? They're shepherds. Many of them are shepherds. And the people who aren't shepherds know enough about shepherding. They get the reference. So the shepherd has a hundred sheep and one goes missing. And so what does the shepherd do? Does the shepherd say, well, that's an acceptable loss under the circumstances? No. The shepherd, the good shepherd, and again, every fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, but we pick this theme up at other times as well. The good shepherd goes looking for the one sheep that is lost, and that's very understandable. That makes sense, and it's out of that experience that we can get just deep in our bones, not just some cognitive understanding, but deep in our bones that God comes looking for us, that God doesn't give up on us. Uh, to to sh shift the metaphor like the hound of heaven, you know, and, and speaking as an owner of several hounds, I will assure you they're very persistent. I mean, if they think it's time to be fed, it's got to be time to be fed. You know, uh, no, 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 you really don't want to keep reading that book. You want to feed us, don't you? Yeah, it's, and it's, now it's time to go out. Now it's time for you to scratch my ears. Yeah, yeah, I know you don't want to do that, but I, you, really, you really do, don't you? Yeah, okay. So, but it's like the hound of heaven. The hound is, is not going to force us. Force is not of God. For God doesn't slam us up against the wall. God doesn't push anything down our throat. 
Tu vai cara, Carlo, invite him, invite him, invite him, invite him. Um, I remember in the parish where I grew up, there was a stained glass window of, of, of Jesus in a door. It says, from the scriptural text, see I stand knocking at the door. And that's really a pretty good image of God, knocking at the door and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. You know, once upon a time in the hymnal, the, the previous one, like the 1940 version, there was a, a hymn, you know, that's no longer with us. It said, once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide. That hymn's not around anymore because it's, 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 it was a stirring melody, but pretty bad theology. It's not just once. Not just once. You turn down this invitation and there'll be another invitation. Another after that and another after that. See, I stand knocking at the door. Knocking, knocking, knocking. So God doesn't give up on us. God doesn't give up on his creation. God doesn't give up on his people. Like the good shepherd who goes looking for the one missing sheep instead of saying, yeah, I've got 99. Life is good. No, he's going to go looking for the one. Or again, like the woman with 10 coins and realizes one is missing. We'll do everything possible to find that missing coin. Again, it's a simple story. It's understandable. And who of us hasn't had some missing thing? Like, honey, do you know where my keys are? I don't know. Let's go look under the cushion it's somewhere. We'll keep looking, though. We're not going to give up on it. I'm going to drive the car. I'm going to need to find it. So, But the point being that like that persistent coin owner, that persistent shepherd, God comes looking. God's mercy extends to us. The fact that we got it wrong doesn't take us out of the love of God. God gets it. God understands. We're fallible creatures. We make mistakes, but yet we have the capacity to grow. We have the capacity to change. We have the capacity to Play above our head, as the saying goes, to respond to context, to reach out in ways that someone might never have imagined of us or for us, and yet there we are. That we can be moved. We can be redeemed. We can be inspired. We can be sent out into the world. And that's what we do every Eucharist at the end. If we had a deacon, the deacon would proclaim it. Otherwise, I'll say it. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go. Go out into that world. Out into that world to show the mercy and love of God that exceeds expectations. That exceeds what anybody could reasonably demand or say, well, this is fair. This is what I deserve. It's more than that. It's ever so much more than that. It's, it's God's generosity. God's love for us that we make known. And that's where this way of teaching again, it comes back around. And Anglicanism especially is an emphasis on the incarnational, on God known in the flesh, God known by our participation. It's not just something that happens to us or comes down and clunks us on the head. It is God calls for our best. So we put our best together with God's best. And that's when amazing things happen because our participation matters. So we make visible, visible in our lives, this generosity, this unwillingness to give up on others, this unwillingness to merely treat someone fairly, but rather to do more. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes it's very difficult, but yet that's our calling. And that's what we are about. As I said before, you may be the best translation of the gospel some people ever meet, some people ever see. They may not read all four gospels. They may not read the New Testament or the whole scriptural witness, but maybe they get you. Maybe they understand your love, understand your generosity, understand you didn't give up on them. And in doing so, we get to live out with our feet and hands and eyes and voice and everything we have to offer the love of a God who doesn't forget us, who doesn't abandon us, and who loves us mercifully, tenderly, generously. We believe in one God.
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in and us. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God the God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of many, of one being of the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came and brought to the river to him, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified at the mighty power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and on promise for his scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the judge of living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is the virgin of the Lord. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers to people are form six, found on page 392 of your um, Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and to those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work with justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, our bishop, and for all bishops, for Father Slocum, and all other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. I especially lift up today the Bernard family and their loss of their dear mother, Betty Bernard, who had been a member of this church for many long years. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise you your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Today I pray for the Queen of England who passed, who was a leader of the Anglican Church. Lord, let their loving kindness be upon them. And pray with their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have, Have mercy upon us, and most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you of life, for the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when you had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints 
into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.